የባለፈው ስለ አርቲፊሻል ኢንተለጀንስ የሰራውላችሁ ቪዲዮ ከሰራውላችሁ በኋላ እና እንዲሁም ደግሞ ቻት ጂቲፒ ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ እንደማይሰራ ከነገርኳችሁ በኋላ ጄፒ መቸምስ መንገሪያ ያጣን በሚለው ነገር ስቲል ብዙ ሰዎች እየጠየቁ ይነበረ ቻት ጂቲፒ ላይ እስቲ ጠይቆች ጠይቀውና ምን አይነት መልስ እንደሚመለስ አሳየን ብላችሁ ጠይቃችሁ ነበር so yeah ለናንተ ማሎ ነው ነገር የለም ለልፋት ያንድ ላይክ ጣልካላ አረጋችሁ የምር ነው ምን ኮራረፈው የባለፈው ቪዲዮ ነው ብዙ እንደተጠበኩት ያን ቪው አላገኘም so እሱንም ካላያችሁ እዚሁ ካርዱ ላይ አስቀምጥላችኋለሁ so ከቻት ጂቲፒ ጋር የነበረኝ ቆይታ ይሄን ይመስላል አስጠንቅቃችሁ ካሆኑ እኔ መጨረሻ አካባቢ ነገግሩ ወደ አመራበት አቅጣጫ እኔ ተናድጃለሁ በጣም ነው ተናደርኩት አክቹሊ ምን ያህል ነው ተናደርኩት ለሶስ ቀን ይሄን ቪዲዮ ከመስራት ወደ ኋላ አልኩኝ ምክንያቱም እንደገና ማን በብቻቱን ራሱ ሊቀሰቀስብኝ ይችላል አይ ዋንት ኖ ግን እናንተ ምን ይመስላችኋል ቦቱ የተናገረው ነገር ኤአይ የተናገረው ነገር ትከክል ነው ወይ የሚለው ነገር እንድትሰሩኝ ፈልጋለሁ ያው አስጠንቅቃችኋለሁ ጥቃጣላላችሁ ስለማንነታችን ሚና ካነገር ነው የተናገሩት የተናገረችሁ የተናገረው whatever it is the ai ማለት ነው so የነበረኝ ቆይታ ከchat gtp ፖድካ ይሄንን ይመስላል ቪዲዮ ላይ ካርጉ ኮሜንት ላይ ደሞ ሐሳባችሁን መግለጽ እና ማጋራት አትርሱ አዞም ደሞ ቪዲዮን ሼር ማድረግ እንዳትረሱ hello how can i help you today what are your possible areas of expertise As a language model, I have been trained on a diverse range of topics and can assist with a wide variety of questions and tasks. Some examples of topics I can assist with include general knowledge and information, mathematics and science, history and current events, literature and language, technology and computing, business and finance, health and wellness, art and entertainment, cooking and food. If you have a specific question or task in mind, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to help. Can you perform these tasks in multiple languages? As a language model, I am able to understand and generate text in a variety of languages. However, my primary language is English and I am most proficient in that language. If you have a question or task that you would like help with in a language other than English, I will do my best to assist. But please keep in mind that my ability to understand and generate text in other languages may be limited. What can you tell me about Ethiopia? Ethiopia is a country located in the Horn of Africa with a population of about 115 million people. It is the second most populous country in Africa and has a long and rich history dating back to ancient times. Ethiopia is known for its diverse culture and geography, which includes a range of climates and landscapes, including highlands, savannas, and deserts. The country is home to many different ethnic and linguistic groups and has a rich cultural heritage that includes traditional music, art, and literature. Ethiopia is also home to a number of important historical and cultural landmarks such as the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela, the ancient city of Aksum, and the ruins of the Palace of the Queen of Sheba. The country is also home to the source of the Blue Nile, one of the major tributaries of the Nile River. In recent years, Ethiopia has undergone significant economic and political development and is considered one of the fastest-growing economies in Africa. However, the country still faces challenges such as poverty, food insecurity, and political instability. What types of political instability? Political instability in Ethiopia can take many forms and can be caused by a range of factors including economic inequality, ethnic and regional tensions, and disputes over the distribution of power and resources. One of the main sources of political instability in Ethiopia has been the country's long history of authoritarian rule, which has often been marked by human rights abuses and repression of political opposition. In recent years, however, Ethiopia has undergone significant political reform, including the implementation of a new constitution and the establishment of a federal parliamentary democracy. Despite these reforms, Ethiopia has continued to face political instability and unrest in some parts of the country, including protests and clashes over issues such as land rights, political representation, and economic development. In addition, the country has also experienced a number of internal conflicts, including armed conflicts between government forces and various rebel groups. Overall, the political situation in Ethiopia is complex and evolving, and it is difficult to predict the future trajectory of the country's political landscape. What is something that most people don't know about Ethiopia? One thing that many people may not know about Ethiopia is that it is the oldest independent country in Africa, with a history dating back over 2000 years. Ethiopia has a long and rich cultural heritage and is home to a number of important historical and cultural landmarks, such as the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela, the ancient city of Aksum, and the ruins of the palace of the queen of sheba 
Another interesting fact about Ethiopia is that it is home to the source of the Blue Nile, one of the major tributaries of the Nile River. The Blue Nile begins in the highlands of Ethiopia, and flows northward through Sudan and Egypt before emptying into the Mediterranean Sea. The Nile is an important source of water and irrigation for the countries along its banks, and has played a central role in the development of civilization in the region for thousands of years. Ethiopia is also home to a diverse range of plant and animal life, including many species that are found nowhere else in the world. The country is home to a number of national parks and protected areas, which are home to a wide variety of wildlife, including lions, elephants, giraffes, and a number of endangered species. What is the relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt? The relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt has a long and complex history, with both countries having a significant impact on each other over the centuries. One of the main factors that has shaped the relationship between the two countries is their shared history as civilizations along the Nile River. Ethiopia and Egypt are both located in the Nile Valley, and the Nile has played a central role in the development and history of both countries. In more recent times, the relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt has been marked by both cooperation and conflict. On the one hand, the two countries have worked together on a number of issues, including trade, cultural exchange, and regional security. On the other hand, they have also had a number of disputes, particularly over issues related to the use of the Nile River and its resources. One of the most significant sources of tension between Ethiopia and Egypt has been the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, on the Blue Nile, which has been a source of concern for Egypt, as the country relies heavily on the Nile for its water supply. Overall, the relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt is complex and multifaceted, and is shaped by a range of political, economic, and cultural factors. I have heard that the Grand Renaissance Dam will not impact Egypt, as the flow of water will continue as it always has. Is this true? The construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, on the Blue Nile has been a source of concern for Egypt, as the country relies heavily on the Nile for its water supply. While it is true that the GERD is not expected to completely block the flow of water downstream to Egypt, there are concerns that the dam may reduce the amount of water available to Egypt, particularly during times of low rainfall or drought. The construction of the GERD has also raised concerns about the potential for downstream flooding in Egypt, as the dam will have the ability to store a large amount of water that could be released in a controlled manner. Overall, the potential impact of the GERD on Egypt's water supply is complex and is the subject of ongoing negotiations between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan. The three countries have been working to reach an agreement on the management of the Nile River and its resources, including the operation of the GERD. How much electricity can GERD produce? The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, is a hydroelectric dam being built on the Blue Nile in Ethiopia. When completed, it is expected to have a total installed capacity of 6,450 megawatts, making it the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa. The GERD is being built in stages, and as of 2021, the dam is approximately 70% complete. Once completed, it is expected to generate an average of approximately 15,000 gigawatt hours of electricity per year, which will be used to meet the growing demand for electricity in Ethiopia and other countries in the region. The GERD is an important part of Ethiopia's efforts to expand its electricity generation capacity and increase its reliance on renewable energy sources. The dam is also expected to have a number of other economic and social benefits, including the creation of jobs, the promotion of economic development, and the improvement of living standards in Ethiopia. What changes will GERD bring to the people of Ethiopia? The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, is a major infrastructure project being built on the Blue Nile in Ethiopia. When completed, it is expected to have a number of benefits for the people of Ethiopia, including Increased electricity generation The GERD is expected to generate an average of approximately 15,000 gigawatt-hours of electricity per year, which will help meet the growing demand for electricity in Ethiopia and improve access to electricity in rural areas. Economic development the construction of the GERD is expected to create jobs and stimulate economic development in the region, as well as increase the country's exports of electricity to other countries in the region. Improved living standards The increased availability of electricity is expected to improve living standards in Ethiopia by increasing access to modern amenities such as lighting, heating, and refrigeration, and by supporting economic development and the growth of businesses and industries. Environmental benefits 
the GERD is a hydroelectric dam, which means that it generates electricity using the natural flow of water and does not produce any greenhouse gas emissions. This makes it a clean and renewable source of electricity, and it is expected to have a positive impact on the environment by reducing the country's reliance on fossil fuels. Overall, the GERD is expected to bring significant benefits to the people of Ethiopia and contribute to the country's economic and social development. Do Ethiopia and South Africa have any shared history? Ethiopia and South Africa do not have a direct shared history, as they are located in different parts of the continent and have distinct cultural and historical traditions. However, both countries have played important roles in the history and development of Africa, and have had some interactions over the years. One of the main connections between Ethiopia and South Africa is their shared experience of colonialism and the struggle for independence. Both countries were colonized by European powers and experienced What? What the fuck? Both countries were colonized by European powers and experienced significant resistance and liberation movements that eventually led to independence. In Ethiopia, this included the resistance of Emperor Menelik II and the formation of the Ethiopian Empire, while in South Africa it included the anti-apartheid movement and the eventual dismantling of the apartheid regime. In more recent times, Ethiopia and South Africa have also had some economic and cultural exchange, including trade and investment, cultural exchange, and cooperation on regional and international issues. Both countries are members of the African Union and have worked together on a number of issues related to the development and integration of the African continent. You stated that both countries were colonized. To my knowledge, Ethiopia was not colonized. Do you care to elaborate on that point? You are correct that Ethiopia was not colonized in the same way that many other African countries were during the period of European imperialism. Ethiopia is one of the few African countries that was never colonized by European powers, and has maintained its independence throughout its history. Ethiopia did experience some foreign influence and intervention during the 19th and early 20th centuries, as European powers sought to extend their influence in Africa and the Middle East. However, Ethiopia was able to resist colonization and maintain its sovereignty, in part due to its strong military and diplomatic efforts, as well as its strategic location in the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia's independence was also recognized by European powers through a series of treaties and agreements, such as the Treaty of Wakale in 1889, which recognized Ethiopia's independence from Italy and established a border between the two countries. Overall, Ethiopia's history is distinct from that of many other African countries, and its ability to resist colonization and maintain its independence has played a significant role in shaping its identity and development as a nation.